Hi everyone, it's Matt from Mark Roberts Motion Control with another Flare 7 tutorial. This video will show you the handheld box setup, mainly configuring your USB controller for operation with Flare. On the left is a list of actions you can assign to buttons and joysticks. On the right is where you map each action to. With a fresh installation, the Mark Roberts handheld box is already configured for you with sensible defaults. The set of actions and device mappings are stored in what's called presets, and you can create as many as you'd like. I'll make one now called Tutorial. Assigning an action is as simple as selecting the action on the left side, then selecting the button or joystick on the right side. Axes can be configured to buttons, but for more precise control, assign them to joysticks. A single button can be assigned as the shift action, allowing double the amount of action assignments. Pressing the shift button together with another button will use the right column mapping. Once you're happy with the configuration, save and apply your changes. Connected to my Flare operator station is a PlayStation controller, but you can use any off-the-shelf controller as an input device for Flare. In the device list, you will see a list of recognized devices that can be configured. The configuration of USB devices is very similar to the Mark Roberts handheld box. On the right will be a list of digital and analog inputs that you can assign to actions. Pressing a button or moving a joystick will indicate when the feedback is a non-zero value. Each analog input can be individually configured to help support a variety of input types. For example, the PS4 controller triggers are giving a feedback of minus 1000 when released, so I can offset this by entering 1000 in the corresponding field. If you would like to know what each setting does, hover your mouse over each setting. Again, when you're finished with your changes, press the save and apply button. While the handheld box setup window is open, the system handheld box control is disabled. This allows you to configure the device without making unintentional movements to your rig. Now that the setup window is closed, I can control the rig with my controller. And that's all there is to it.